So before you skip past this part of the video and go to the 20th best line of Game of Thrones, let me go over the criteria for this list at least. Because this is a very hard and subjective list to make, and most people in the discussion post I made asking you guys what your favorite line is, gave a different answer. For me, the criteria is primarily based on the pure quality of the line of dialogue, and that is generally enhanced by how witty the line is, how well it builds character and lore, how much subtext there is, and how good the literary device is, like a metaphor or a simile. Lines like, I demand a trial by combat, isn't necessarily a great line, but it's completely enhanced by the moment it is in. Which to me is one of my favorite moments in the show, but not a favorite line. When compared to this line, money buys a man silence for a time, a bolt in the heart buys it forever. It is basically outclassed because of the rich use of personification that builds the morality of Littlefinger's character. So hopefully that'll paint a good picture for the lines that you can expect in this video. And also, I rewatched the first four seasons and wrote down over 50 lines, and it's been pretty tough narrowing them down. I did get halfway through season 5, but there wasn't any dialogue so far that could compete with the first four seasons, and I definitely doubt the later seasons would be able to compete at all. Without further ado, here is number 20. She'll wear this like a badge of honor. Where is it silence, or I'll honor you again? Two back-to-back -back standout lines coming from the power couple of Robert and Cersei. My favorite one being Robert's clapback at Cersei's clever little response. I love the fact that George R. R. Martin replaced the word slap with honor. It turns this from a generic line into an instant classic. On top of there being a layer of irony that honoring is the exact opposite in this scenario. And then even past that layer, we are witnessing this line from the point of view of one of the most honorable characters in the show. I don't know how this line managed to be this great, but it just is. I love Get the Breastplate Stretcher, but this one steals my heart because of how deep it manages to go, and how great of a response it is to Cersei. This is one of the first times she gets rolled in a conversation, and it makes me so happy. Number 19. A good act does not wash out the bad, nor a bad the good. Stannis is essentially a walking machine of great quotes. They are all pretty good, but the reason why this one exceeds the others is that this line shows how people are not two-dimensional and are layered. There's no such thing as just being a hero or a villain. If you do a good deed, but do it in a corrupt way, then it's not honorable. However, if you make one mistake, then it doesn't mean you are suddenly a terrible person, and every good deed you have done vanishes. Number 18. You are not on trial for being a dwarf. Oh. I've been on trial for that my entire life. Now, I'm partially breaking my rules on this line, but it's still a banger of a line nonetheless. I have a lot of other picks with great literary device usage, but this one is so personal and it perfectly showcases how much discrimination Tyrion has gone through his entire life. It turns a rigged court case of Tyrion getting beat down into a triumphant moment of him standing up to everyone. This line just hits with so much catharsis that it makes you instantly sympathize and cheer for Tyrion. And the line itself isn't bad by any means, considering that you can't be on trial for who you are as a person. Number 17. We mothers do what we can to keep our sons from the grave. They do seem to yearn for it. We shower them with good sense, and it slides right off like rain off a wing. I think that's a great perspective that shows how much Lady Olenna cares about her children, summed up with these few lines. Yearning for the grave perfectly illustrates how men are so driven to become a badass knight and aren't aware that it will most likely mean their death. We even see this in the scene where Renly Baratheon dies and Loras was so eager to avenge his death that he didn't even care for his own. And then the simile in the third line of good sense sliding off like a rain off a wing shows how ignorant these types of characters are. Even Robert Baratheon detailed a lordship character like this in his talks with Ser Barristan, who rushed him on a battlefield and died immediately. This quest for honor and valor is so meaningless given the overbearing consequence of death, and mothers are the only ones that can truly see this because of the fact that it's unlocked by their love of their sons. Number 16. You want to be handed the king? You want to rule? This is what ruling is. Lying on a bed of weeds, ripping them out by the root one by one before they strangle you in your sleep. That's a damn good metaphor of what ruling is like in King's Landing. I just love the picture of everyone trying to backstab you as weeds coming up and surrounding you. Littlefinger, Varys, Cersei, Joffrey, all having their own motives, and if you don't know their motives and keep them in line, then you're done for. 
Ned Stark got utterly tangled in those weeds and he died very quickly. But someone like Cersei, she keeps those weeds under control and at times, she completely removes them at the end of season 6. Number 15 Never forget what you are. The rest of the world will not. Wear it like armor. And it can never be used to hurt you. This is overall great advice for people held under discrimination while simultaneously being a great simile. Embracing who you are and wearing that like armor is very uplifting. It also paints Tyrion as being a likable character who sympathizes with people he doesn't even know. Despite the Starks technically being enemies to the Lannisters, it doesn't stop Tyrion from being a good person. I did choose this initial line as number 15, but even the line after this is very good. All dwarves are bastards in their father's eyes. I would bundle them together, but they are technically different lines, and I personally prefer the first one. All dwarves are bastards in their father's eyes is relatively straightforward in terms of subtext in comparison to the line I picked. Number 14. We could spend all night trading tales of lost loves. Nothing makes the past a sweeter place to visit than the prospect of imminent death. This is probably one of the most underrated scenes in the whole show that a lot of people don't remember because it's overshadowed by the battle for the wall. But the line itself is such a wholesome line and it really makes me want to hug Aemon Targaryen. This man recalling his life and talking about his past love is pure bliss that needs to constantly be injected into my ear canal to make me happier every day. Going over all the happy nostalgia of the past perfectly combats the scary nature of death. And this line expertly symbolizes that fact, and with one of my favorite characters. Number 13. You waste time trying to get people to love you. You'll end up the most popular dead man in town. Personally, I really connect with this line, because it's impossible to get absolutely everyone to like what you make. Especially for YouTube, where there will be a segment of the audience that doesn't like what you made. There's no point in arguing in the comments, because as Bran said, you'll end up the most popular dead man in town. But going back to the show, Bronn ironically has so many witty lines for just being a sellsword and he spews so much wisdom. Tyrion is over here molding about people not liking him, while Bronn is vibing the whole time. Also, this line closely resembles what Tyrion's father says in that you shouldn't concern yourself with the opinions of the sheep. In doing so, it practically compromises you as a person and you can't live a fulfilling life in a constant state of worry all the time. Tyrion has no chance in appeasing everyone given his nature, and he just has to accept that. Number 12. Well, my brother has his sword, and I have my mind, and a mind needs books like a sword needs a whetstone. Another one of the first classics from Tyrion. To me, I really can't think of a simile I like more throughout the whole show. Like generally, similes have a powerful ending to the line when they make the relation, but for this line, it feels consistently great because it shows the necessity of two different subjects. That being how a mind needs books and a sword needing a whetstone. It shows the duality of the two most powerful forces in Game of Thrones, the ability to outsmart your enemies and to defeat them with a sword. That, and it perfectly sets up Tyrion as an intellectual character, by both him delivering a literary device to communicate this information, and by the line itself by his mind needing books. Number 11. Love is the death of duty. That is a very important metaphor in the show because of how relevant it is towards the primary characters. Each of these characters have a duty to uphold, but if they're distracted by love, then they can't carry out their duty. We look at Daenerys getting distracted by Dario and her having to dump him to save herself for a proper marriage alliance, Tyrion actively ignoring Shay so he can serve the realm and also protect her, and Jon Snow having to betray Ygritte for the Night's Watch. Love is the Death of Duty sets such a massive precedence of realistic and personal consequences for the main characters. It creates an interesting dilemma and it leads to a lot of engaging conflict. Also, this line is an oxymoron because love is something that gives people life and the will to live, but in this scenario, it means the death of duty. Before moving on, NordVPN wanted me to make sure you guys have one of the best VPNs on the internet, and aren't in a medieval state of no cybersecurity like the entire population of Westeros. Their lives would be so much better if they had access to some of my favorite features like secure browsing, which denies any unwanted third parties accessing your information, keeping the White Walker virus out of your domain with Nord cybersecurity, which is included with your subscription that filters out malicious traffic, content on streaming services isn't region locked, and you can get more content by changing your location, you just straight up get more free shows and movies that are only available in certain countries. 
And even if you are hesitant to give NordVPN a try, they have a 30 day money back guarantee. And the reason why I'm so eager to talk about this sponsorship is that for this month, there's a great Cyber Month deal. Go to nordvpn.com supercuss to get a two year plan plus one additional month with a huge discount. Don't be like an isolated Jon Snow, upgrade to NordVPN today with my special discount code and become up to date and escape that medieval nature on the internet of not having a VPN. Number 10. A lion doesn't concern himself with the opinions of a sheep. Hey, we're starting at the top 10 strong with a classic quote from Tywin Lannister's first badass scene. And this is such a great scene because it has so many amazing lines like this. The reason why I picked this one out in particular is because A, this metaphor relates him back to his house sigil due to the animal referenced, and B, it shows the arrogant nature of being rich. Because of that, this line also solidifies Tywin as being a menacing antagonistic force. A man who lacks empathy and who's extremely wealthy is downright scary. And I also like how Tywin saying this line contrasts himself to Jaime by the fact that Jaime does care what people think of him, which alludes to how Jaime is much less of an antagonist in comparison to Tywin. That is a man who clearly lacks empathy, while Jamie is a man who does not, although at this point in the story, it is buried deep within his character. So even though at first this line doesn't come across as having a crazy amount of depth, it turns out to have a lot of it from the hidden subtext. Number 9. Money buys a man's silence for a time. A bolt in the heart buys it forever. I briefly went over this line in the introduction of the video, but to reiterate, this is a great metaphor that flawlessly shows how cruel and manipulative Littlefinger is. That and it also plays into the political undertones of King's Landing, and all the scheming and lack of trust amongst everyone. The fact that a character like Littlefinger delivers a line like this really shows how evil he is. Personally, I think Littlefinger is the scariest and most dangerous person in the show. Ramsay and Joffrey are both reckless unlike Littlefinger which this line shows how smart the man really is. And to me, that is why I think this line makes him so terrifying. Number 8. There is only one God, and his name is Death. And there is only one thing we say to Death. Not today. Although this line relates to Death, it is actually a very inspiring quote. When confronted by any form of failure, you need to stand up and try your best, and say that classic line, not today. I find myself occasionally thinking about this line when in those types of scenarios, and the fact that it's that impacting goes to show how memorable the line is. That and it's also delivered by the fan favorite, Sirio Pharrell. And I also feel like this line breathes courage into you as well as it is motivating. Overall, a great line to be imprinted onto Arya, who essentially lives by this line throughout her entire journey. Number 7. When you play the Game of Thrones, you win, or you die. There is no middle ground. I feel like a lot of people would put this in their top 3 or 5, but for me, the line is relatively straightforward, and it doesn't have a lot of subtext. Or at least, in comparison to the lines ahead of this one. Besides that small flaw, this line is essentially the flagship quote of the show. And for good reason, because it really shows how deadly the Game of Thrones is especially since it foreshadows the fate of Ned Stark two episodes early. On top of it teasing him getting betrayed in the same episode in which Cersei tells him that. This line not only sets up the political undertones of the show superbly, but it also features the sheer stakes that are involved when you play the game. There is technically a middle ground in the politics for the throne, but Cersei exaggerates her point to Ned Stark as a form of intimidation when he was initially trying to intimidate her earlier in the scene with the knowledge of her having sex with Jaime and since that is the last line of the scene, it really ends with a bang. Number 6. If any man dies with a clean sword, I'll rape his fucking corpse! Now, you probably think I'm crazy for putting this line so high, especially above the last one, but I don't care dude, this is my list, and I love the Hound. This is obviously my favorite line that he delivers throughout the show, and it's both so witty and intimidating at the same time. It takes what should otherwise be a generic threatening line, and turns it into a smart and hilarious roast towards his own men. It's just such a clever way to say that phrase. That is essentially what I think of every time I play Call of Duty and my team is shitting the bed and not getting any kills, and I have to do all the work myself. It's so relatable, funny, and ferocious. Every time I hear it, it slams a massive smile on my face. Also, the Hound's delivery of this line is iconic. It really hypes you up for the first battle of the show, and makes the hound seem like a complete juggernaut coming out of the gates. 
Number five. Influence grows like a weed. I tended mine patiently until its tendrils reached from the red keep where I managed to wrap them around something very special. Similar to maintaining the weeds of ruling through Cersei's line, I also really like the picture the simile portrays of influence and power being a network of weeds sprawling around the kingdom. Varys is also one of those characters who is so mysterious, and this line builds him up as being extremely powerful, despite not looking menacing in any way. That, and it also gives you some backstory towards Varys, and how he's been growing his influence since he was cut as a young boy. Along with it portraying Varys to be eviler, and isn't a man turned off by revenge. Although he kind of just becomes a protagonist later on, instead of an unpredictable and dangerous man he was in the books. Number 4. Any man who must say I am the king is no true king. This is a line that has really grown on me because of how much subtext there is behind it. It's not overly fancy in terms of literary devices, but I just love the notion set by Tywin Lannister saying this. That meaning being that simply declaring yourself king and being born into it doesn't make you a worthy ruler. Which that essentially foreshadows the ending of the show. No one chose Joffrey, and the spoiled brat gets manhandled by Tywin Lannister. The following line is great by sending the king to bed, but this line has a lot more meaning on top of it still being very badass. Number 3. Chaos isn't a pit. Chaos is a ladder. I wish I could put this entire monologue as number 3, but Chaos is a ladder is such an iconic line that shows the pure madness that is the politics of King's Landing. The representation of Chaos being a ladder shows the selfish and backstabbing nature of the realm so well in just a few words. Which, to contrast this to later seasons, it feels jarring when everyone willingly gives the throne to the Starks without any thought or point of conflict. Conflict is the life and blood of what makes shows so interesting, but we want to see everyone backstabbing each other as Littlefinger details in this single line. This is by far the highest point for Littlefinger's character, and it remains as one of the best moments and top three lines in the show. Number two. A day will come when you think you're safe and happy, and your joy will turn to ashes in your mouth. It's crazy that Tyrion delivers such a devious and hateful line when he wasn't in any form of danger since the scene is sparked by Cersei supposedly finding Tyrion's whore. But goddamn Tyrion, you completely outdid yourself in threatening Cersei here. Both of these sentences have so much subtext and background meaning that it cuts so deeply within their relationship. It's almost as if Tyrion knew Joffrey was going to be assassinated at some point, and Cersei's joy would turn to ashes. As for the second line, the debt being paid is all the horrible things Cersei has done to Tyrion. We don't get a lot of background stories of when they were kids, so this line accentuates that amazingly of how much they hate each other. And then this line comes back in Season 4, and it essentially evolves given their recent events. Number 1. Power resides where men believe it resides. It's a trick, a shadow on the wall. And a very small man can cast a very large shadow. Wow, a double whammy metaphor and essentially the thesis as to what Game of Thrones is and how people hold power. People choose who they follow and they empower them with their support. Even though this line is number one, I struggled for a second putting it here because of how much David and Dan reused it in season eight. Men decide where power resides. Power resides where men believe. Shut them. your mouth. God, that actually tilts me. Instead of coming up with their own great writing, they continue to recycle George R. Martin's dialogue from the earlier seasons. But taking that out of the equation, the line itself builds Varys as a character by showing him caring for the realm and him thinking that's where power resides, it has a lot of depth, and it uses literary devices expertly. And a very small man can cast a very large shadow line really empowers Tyrion and makes him seem unstoppable in the earlier seasons. This was him and Varys' prime, and this single line and moment is what I love so much about Game of Thrones. Utter perfection. So yeah, those are my top 20 lines of Game of Thrones. Obviously, this is my personal opinion, and I doubt anyone would make a similar list from the sheer amount of magnificent dialogue in the show to choose from. If this video does well though, I think it would be fun to do a top 3 lines from each season, so there's more variety. Because for this video, all these lines are from the first 4 seasons, and that wasn't because I was lazy, it's because I genuinely couldn't find a line of dialogue I liked more than what was in the first 4 seasons, on top of having 50 of them. 
But regardless though, I hope you enjoyed the ranking, and thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this video.